to you ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of a 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Conveners of the Anglophone General Conference want government to make a clear-cut statement on whether it is for or against the said event. Speaking in a press conference in the economic capital dollar that was today, they said that the unclear stance of the government of Cameroon, which has not yet issued a written authorization requested by the conveners, is the reason why the said conference was postponed. That was yesterday. Babla Jonathan was part of the said press conference. He tells us more in the following report. Up till now, we have not received a written response. A written word from the administration is the stumbling block that has compelled the conveners of the Anglophone General Conference to slow down a few days to the initial date, 21st and 22nd November 2018. This is the second time it is postponed. During this press conference in Douala, the conveners express doubts over government's stand on the Anglophone General Conference, considering the fact that the division officer of the host town, Southwest Regional Capital, Boya, has remained silent. We do not know what is in the mind of the government. Though the conveners acknowledge the law that permits them to go ahead after declaring the meeting, at the office of the division officer of Boya, they want a written authorization to serve as a tangible evidence of government's support. Beaucoup de Camerounais, pas seulement des anglophones, même des francophones, seront déçus. The Archbishop Emeritus of the Douala Metropolitan Archdiocese of the Roman Catholic Church, Christian Cardinal Tumi, Right Reverend Funky Samuel Foba, moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, and the Imam of the Boya Central Mosque, Al Haji Mohammed Abu Bakar, acknowledged the disappointment of Anglophones and Cameroonians in general over the postponement of the AGC, but said, as religious leaders, they must ensure that they are taking the right steps on the right track and touch the right direction. They remain confident that government will respond favorably to their request for a written authorization in the days ahead, and the conference will eventually take place in Boya and only in Boya. Yes, because Boya has a historical place in Anglophone Cameroon, and we think that that conference will take place in Boya because it concerns the Anglophones. And because the Anglophone General Conference, which was supposed to begin tomorrow, the 21st of November 2018, did not take place, the conveners, who are church leaders and actors of the civil society, were more disappointed. For greater details in the following excerpt, we are going to be having their reactions, as well as that of Barista Agbo Bala, who was present at today's press conference. They were speaking to Babla Jonathan. Take a listen. The divisional officer of Boya and up till now we have not received a written response from him. On the other hand, we have been informed by our lawyers that if a response has not been given before the meeting or conference date, it indicates that it is a yes. We know that we are living in trying times. We also know that each day our people are dying and this of the government to act fast with a written response which will enable us to reconvene. We cannot outrightly say the government is reluctant in giving a response. Uh, the government has a lot in its hands and we do not know what is in the mind of the government but all we can state here clearly is that we have not received a written response from the government. But we hope that with the trying times and understanding that our people are dying and the Anglophone problem is still at stake, we are very convinced that in no distant time, government will give everything response and that will enable us to convene, reconvene the conference. The fact that the government is silent has not given everything response, we cannot quite state whether they are in for it or out of it. But we thought that as a people who are out for peace, we want a situation where everybody is involved. And if the government gives his go-ahead, it's an indication that government is also part of what we are doing. 
if the permission were given, should we have been ready for tomorrow? Of course. The travel, the work is not done by us. It's done, will be done by those who will be in Boya. We are only, because we have only just two questions. What are the causes of the problem? What solutions? And we go away into small groups to reflect on that and come and put together. And then we continue to Yaoundé to see the president, those who would have been chosen, to say, these are the grievances. These are the propositions. Because we want, the problem of the Anglophones is a national problem. It's not only there, because we are still a whole. And if a part of a whole is not well, the whole is not well. We do not find any real or uh, a challenging somebody who is an obstacle to the convening of this uh, uh, conference. We don't have that. We are not also playing with words that the government has not approved, there is freedom, uh, that is the fact that the government is silent gives us approval. Uh, it will be important for you journalists to understand that we are not politicians. We are a religious body. And we want things done practically so that tomorrow, you, the same children, do not come back and say, you play with the same words to accuse us for doing things which are not proper. We are here to mediate, and we think that the government, what, let it take, the government should take our time. It will not be very uh, far from now, God willing. We will convince, you will be in Boya eventually. We will be in Boya, and you will attend the conference. If you are finding a peaceful solution, it starts gradually. And the convenience felt that as the religious leaders, they owe a duty to their people to ensure that they start finding a solution. And the solution might just begin from the conference. But equally also is to see how we do a stop taking of our relationship in this entity called Cameroon. Let us make an assessment of our 57 year relationship and also to address the two or three years since October 2016. How far we've gone? What have we achieved? How can we re-strategize, you know, to continue the struggle, but while ensuring that our people are not killed, we find a solution to, not, to the humanitarian catastrophe, and we see how we can fight for to release those who are in jail. Another pertinent question was uh, how ready was Boya, the host town, as far as the conference is concerned, the Anglophone General Conference was postponed two days to the event, but the expected atmosphere was still to be felt in the southwest regional headquarters of Boya amidst gunshot in the town that was in the early hours of today. Civil society actors like Barista Agbobala have maintained that there is need for all the actors to be involved. Details with Derek Jato from Boya. Even before the outing by the conference organizing committee announcing that the Anglophone General Conference scheduled for 21st to 22nd November 2018 in Boya has been postponed, the town of Boya in itself did not show any sign of preparedness. The streets were void of banners. Billboards were there, but no message on them announcing a conference that many say was to certainly turn a new page in the history of southern Cameroon. Instead, as the count down narrows, hostilities were mounted on the ground as separatist leaders immediately announced a one-week lockdown. The conference must not hold in any part of the two Anglophone regions, and a move by their soldiers to enforce the decision on the ground sparked fire. Gunshots between the military and the Amazonian Defense Forces were heard again, and lives were lost including an insane girl in Munyaboya. To Barista Agbobala, the Anglophone General Conference will be a plus to the Anglophone people. If you ask me, I would say after the conference, the conference should nominate or designate 10 to 15 people at home that could able to meet 10 or 15 of our brothers and sisters in the diaspora in a neutral venue and see the calf 
a way forward for the people of Southern Cameroon. But you can on, we can only do that if the people in the uh, out at home meet. You understand? So that it, it would be representative of the entire Southern Cameroons. That to me that is that that is something. You know, but if we sit and we just say people should not go, these people are bloodless. No, we spend our time just trying to castigate and criticize people. Okay, let us the energy that we waste on doing videos and audios condemning people, inciting violence against, we can use that energy. We can channel that energy for the right cause. We can channel that energy to move forward the Saudi and Cameroon's case. But the Ambazonian leaders will only later suspend the one-week lockdown on the condition that the Anglophone General Conference too has been postponed. But critics see the government failure to authorize the conference as the main nail that has punctured the conference. The conference organizing committee on their part has called for calm as they wait for the Cameroon government to authorize the set Anglophone General Conference. But the situation on the ground is getting no better. 9 a.m. Tuesday, November 20, 2018. Boya is again transformed into a gun battleground. And when will all this stop? That is the question. The people of the southwest and the northwest regions are asking. And that is, of course, uh, the question Derek Jad told. This is the second postponement, but the difference this time is that a future date is not yet known. Of course, we shall be asking uh, that question from uh, the one of the conveners who is our guest tonight. Did the Anglophone Conference announce since July 25th, 2018 fail? Because the government of Cameroon is still to officially give its okay. As we see in the following report, there is no doubt about it. The state has a pivotal role to play. Details in the following story. Um, when series of fruitless meetings and government actions have not been able to resolve the Anglophone crisis, church leaders and actors have came together to seek with the way forward. But the outcome is what many are now describing as another white elephant project as the Anglophone crisis, or the conference rather, has suffered another adjournment. One of the conveners and spokesperson of the organizing committee is our guest tonight, Eli Smith. Good evening to you, Eli. Thank you for joining us tonight on Talking Point. It's a pleasure for having me, and welcome on board, Mimi. Of course, during the press conference of today, uh, you already outlined some of the reasons why the conference was postponed. Many are saying that you possibly did that in a hurry. What if the government decided today to change its mind? What will you have done? I think his eminent uh, Cardinal Toomey has made it abundantly clear that if the government now says it is authorizing it to go on, we will go on. Because uh, one point of correction which I wish to make is that I'm just a secretary, I'm not a convener. The conveners are the uh, men of God that the church leaders, the imams of the Bamenda and uh, Boya Central Mosque, the moderator of the Presbyterian Church, and of course the Archbishop Emeritus of the Dwala Archdiocese. So if the and government gives its okay now, the meeting will take place tomorrow? It will take okay. place because the conveners have at heart the sufferings of the masses of Northwest and Southwest regions, and of course Cameroon at large. Okay. Now, uh, besides being the spokesperson, you are highly implicated as far as the organization of the Anglophone Conference is concerned. Tell us what you did actually. We know that the government, whether you like it or not, has a very principal role to play as far as seeking solutions to this Anglophone crisis is concerned. What did you do concretely to ensure that the government is fully implicated in the organization of this conference? What we did is to inform them that we want to organize the conference that you know the name. Mm -hmm. uh, making them being implicated means that we wanted them to be part of it. I don't know what you want to mean, but we did inform I mean, like them. And like meeting some of the stakeholders in Yaoundé because ending only at the level of Boya and uh, demanding for an official authorization. Was it enough, Eli? It wasn't it enough, was. but there are things we want has we don't have to come here and start declaring. Sure. We, we did a lot of underground work mm -hmm. to make them to soften the ground, to make them understand that an Anglophone general meeting or conference is a prerequisite for a national dialogue. 
because you can't pretend that you will solve the Anglophone crisis in isolation. Mm -hmm. And that it is, I'd like to say, it is the first step in a journey of a thousand miles, which means that we do one here and eventually someone with them. It may take place uh, out of the country as well, but the authorities were duly informed, mm -hmm. but we don't want to appear confrontational yeah, sure. We are not defying the government, contrary to what people, as some people were uh, floating around. And we never wanted to go ahead because our lawyers, as I said this morning, said uh, we, uh, according to the law, after you must have declared, mm -hmm. you could go ahead. But given the nature of what we want to do, we think the government need, needed to make it abundantly clear that they are for it and that they have to append what is required in such a meeting. Not defined government is very important, but Cameroonians need to know uh, the, 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 the impression, the stance of the government as far as resolving this Anglophone crisis is concerned because according to actors of the civil society, politicians, this was a veritable platform for a start to a solution or the beginning of a solution uh, to the Anglophone crisis. Do you have the impression that the government is not ready to resolve this crisis by delaying, as I can put it, to issue an official authorization? I wouldn't say exactly that way because no right-thinking government in the world will want to have an unstable country. All governments in the world want prosperity, unity, and stability. I just want to believe that they are taking their time. If I run a mock into a premature conclusion saying no, they don't want it, I may be wrong. So that is the reason why this time around we have allowed a kind of open end to, in order that if they have their own preoccupations, let them make it, uh, make it known to us clearly that these are our preoccupations because we have not hidden our intentions from day one is that we want to contribute, we want to ask the question to people of the Northwest and Southwest regions that what is making them unhappy and possibly for them to propose what can solve the problems, which will be binding, we shall take them and then take it to the President of the Republic and it can trigger in our idea is to trigger a national meeting mm -hmm. because as i said you can solve the problem in anglophone cameroon in isolation besides the infidelity of the 1961 fundamental law mm -hmm. there are many problems that we have in the southwest and in the northwest that happen in east cameroon as well which means that if you want to satisfy everybody you need to look at what is happening and also try to see that other problems, similar problems beside the historical problem could be solved as well. So you can't solve our problems in isolation. It should be, it will be solved at national level. Now, now Mr. Ellis Smith, a very important question. You know, the government has always maintained that the form of the state is not debatable. But this is a crisis that the government has been fighting for a long time to resolve. There were equally suspicions that uh, uh, the pro-independence fighters might want to impose their agenda as far as the meeting is concerned. That could possibly be what is discouraging the government of Cameroon. Yes, those who what have... What did you do to reassure the government that you had very clear intention and that this was going to be a neutral platform to discuss the various uh, proposals and take it to the national scene. What we did is to tell those we met mm -hmm. that, look, we have no hidden agenda whatsoever. Uh, the thing is, if you want to solve a problem sincerely, you shouldn't put a taboo. You should allow people to express themselves freely. When I say non-binding, it doesn't mean in any way that people will say we are for federalism and automatically become federalism. They were just proposition we collect and then we transmit but the most important thing is that if such and if the conference would have taken place one it would have put to an end the claim that you don't have interlocutors mm -hmm. two it would have shown that there is an endogenous movement 
that can into the defy the other side. Yes, that the side of the English speaking population. The English speaking population, of course. because there are, but mm -hmm. visibly the government may not have wanted to talk with them. The, ta the, ta yeah. the time is against us. Mm -hmm. uh, just to find out from you, do you know when? The conference will take place. No, we, we can't. We don't have an idea. We this time around, we don't want to give a date. We want to prepare another enabling environment to show that we are not defiant. If we were defiant, we would have gone to Boya. So you are we, waiting on the government. Yeah, we will road. talk with them. We okay. are trying to talk with them to let them understand, like in quote, a baby, that this thing is good for you. Is not good only for us. Thank you so much. You are welcome Smith, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have you some other time again. God willing. Thank you so much. See you some other time. We continue with the news tonight.